Hello everyone and welcome to Nancy Drew Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. This one looks like a lot of fun, so let's get started. Welcome to my latest case, Last Train to Blue Moon Canyon. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorial. As always, Junior please. Dear Hannah, here I am at the railroad station along with a handful of other detectives about to board a train bound for who knows where. The only person who knows where we're going is Lori Gerard. That's the young woman who invited everyone. Actually, she didn't really invite me. She invited Frank and Joe Hardy, and they invited me. And I've always wanted to join forces with the Hardy boys. I just hope this doesn't turn out to be another one of Lori's silly attempts to grab publicity. Some people can be a little too rich and a little too famous for their own good. All aboard! Wish me luck. Love, Nancy. Well, people, now that our little orientation tour is over, let's get started. Okay, I, again, am Lori Gerard, and the first thing I want to do is thank you all for coming. John Gray, I am so thrilled that you're taking time out from that TV show of yours to do some ghost hunting here with us. I mean, Ghost Chasers is like the best cable show ever. And Charlena Purcell. I cannot tell you how much I adore those romance novels you write. Your characters just seem so real. And all that stuff you know about the Old West, you are just awesome. And Tino Balducci, only the most famous police detective in the country. And then there's Frank and Joe Hardy. They're amateur detectives. My dad and their dad are old friends. And you must be the other amateur detective, their friend, Natalie? Nancy. Nancy Drew? Whatever. All right. I'll bet you're wondering where we're going. Well, we're going to Copper Gorge, Colorado. Why? To solve the mystery of what happened to Jake Hurley, the man who originally owned this train. Because, see, one day in 1903, his train, this train, was found in a place called Blue Moon Canyon, which was out in the middle of the Nevada desert. Only the engineer was on board, and he was dead. As for Jake Hurley, he had disappeared from the face of the earth. Oh, and two more things. Before he disappeared, Jake was rumored to have found the richest gold mine in the world. And the train he owned, this train, his wife Camille died on it while they were going to the gold fields. It was rumored to be haunted. <laughs> She's gone. Oh my gosh. What in the world? What the? Hey, what's going on? People should never go tampering with things they don't understand. Oh, brother. It's okay. Everybody just stay calm. No need to panic. I'll get to the bottom of this. Well, Nancy, you're up on all that social etiquette stuff. What are you supposed to do when your hostess vanishes into thin air? You investigate. If I don't seem concerned, it's because I'm not. Lori Gerard is a young woman whose only goal in life is to be famous. She craves attention and habitually uses her father's considerable wealth to get it. Okay, wasn't Charlena Purcell the lady who wrote the books in Shadow Ranch and we talked to her on the phone? Because I remember that I liked her, so if she's actually in this game, I'm so happy. So you think her disappearing like that is just some kind of publicity stunt? I just think she couldn't resist showing off in front of all of us minor celebrities. What was your name again? Nancy Drew. You and I have actually met. Sort of. I called you not too long ago when I was at Shadow Ranch. You gave me some information about Dirk Valentine. Ah, Nancy Drew. You don't remember me, do you? No. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? Psst. Nancy! Come here! Uh, excuse me for a second. Well, this is off to an interesting start. Hello, Hardy boys. Nice to meet you in person. Hey, Nance. Where have you two been? I followed Tino Balducci. And I went after John Gray. He went straight to the room in the car that used to be Camille's and didn't come out again. I could hear all these weird noises coming from inside. Did you talk to him? I was just about to go in, but the next thing I know, Joe's got my arm in a vice grip and is dragging me back here, babbling about how Balducci's our guy. He found something on the floor right where Lori was standing when the train went dark. 
I saw him pick it up and put it in his pocket. Then he left. Did you see what it was? When I tried to talk to him, he just kind of brushed me aside and said something snotty like, I'm on the job here, Junior, so just go back to the playground and stay out of the way. In case you two hadn't noticed, we're not getting a lot of respect around here. Can't we at least tell Balducci that we do stuff for ATAC? You know the rules. ATAC? American teens against crime. We do a lot of undercover work for them. Wonder Cop's probably never even been undercover. Joe, let it go. What'd Charlena have to say? She thinks Lori is faking this whole disappearance thing. She's not the only one. How can you say that? You heard Lori scream. Anybody can scream, Joe. Especially girls whose fathers have given them acting lessons along with everything else they've ever wanted. What about you, Nancy? What do you think? Um... I don't know. I didn't hear any signs of a struggle and she did, did disappear very quickly. She could have an accomplice and that's who we're trying to find or something, I don't know. I kind of agree with Frank. You've got to be kidding. Do you think maybe one of Lori's other guests is in on her disappearance? It's certainly possible. From the way she talked, it didn't sound like she knew any of them. Maybe that's what she wanted us to think. Or maybe that's what one of them wanted her to think. Well, whether Lori disappeared by force or by choice, what we've got to do now is find her. Absolutely. Has anyone talked to the engineer? Not that I know of. Then I'm going to head up front and tell him what's happened. Maybe he knows something we don't. Good idea. In the meantime, we'll take another look around in here. Great. Catch you later. Yeah, from that one camera angle we saw during that cutscene, there was somebody else there listening from behind the doorway. I don't know if that was a worker on the train or another passenger. Yes? What are you working on? I'm writing my next book. I'm on a deadline, so until I write those two most wonderful of all three-letter words, the end, everywhere I go, my laptop goes, and every chance I get, I write. What else do you know about Jake Hurley? You know, the man who originally owned this train? Wealthy, imaginative, adventurous, stubborn, egocentric, and most importantly, he was smitten at the age of 35 by a young French woman named Camille Voulet, who died about a year after they were married. Where was he from? East Coast. Philadelphia, I think. His parents were British aristocrats. Sometime in the 1870s, he decided to seek his fortune out west, so he had this train custom-built so that he, and some years later his wife, could traverse the mountains and plains in relative comfort. So he went west and became a miner? All anyone knows for sure is that years after Camille's death, he showed up in Denver with a pouch full of gold nuggets and semi-precious stones, which he used to purchase mining supplies. He refused to say how he'd come by them, which of course led to speculation that he had found a fantastically rich vein somewhere. Although to this day, its existence remains unsubstantiated and its location quite unknown. Why do you think Lori invited you on this trip? No doubt because I'm such an authority on life in the Old West, and because I'm so good at using old information to unearth new information. My knack for research is... well, it's a gift. Well, I'll let you go. All right, then. Okay, we've got our two mysteries for the game. The mystery of Lori's disappearance and the mystery of the existence of this possible gold vein, it seems. There's a phone. Engineer, what do you want? Hello, I'm one of the passengers, and I just thought you should know that Lori Gerard has disappeared. So? Did you know she was going to disappear? Hey, all I know is I take orders from Miss Gerard, okay? Right now my orders are to get this train to Copper Gorge non-stop. And until Miss Gerard tells me otherwise, that's what I'm gonna do. But Lori may not even be on the train anymore. Look, Miss Gerard may not be a rocket scientist or anything, but even she knows better than to jump off a moving train. But- Now if you'll excuse me, I got me a train to run. All right then. A square and a duck. That's an odd thing to take notice of. It looks like this thing opens up. But how? You have to sacrifice a square duck to it. Looks like some sort of steam valve. That's a good warning. Thank you, game. I'm not going to touch that, then. This door goes outside. Opening it now would not be a good idea. Says you.
All right, let's head through this door. Hi. Pretty. Looks like some kind of gemstone. Kind of looks like Peridot. Right click to rotate. Okay, this isn't right. Um... Oh, I see. That took me longer than I thought it would. Left pickaxe and lamp with Buell for safekeeping. To open what's closed, lead is the key. Or is it lead is the key? That's what I was wondering. Okay, first puzzle this down. This must have been the sleeping car. A tale of two dolls. Ill-tempered Edna could not get her way. She couldn't get, Al get Alice to come out and play. I can't, I'm too tired, is what Alice said. I just want to go straight back to bed. Edna angrily tried to make herself heard, but all that came out was one two-part word. Why, I'm not your mother, yawning Alice replied, till Edna the Terrible finally gave up and cried. Interesting. I need four numbers to unlock this, and there's, what, 10,000 possible combinations? <sighs> Guessing could take me a while. Oh, yeah? How about the ultimate guess? Okay, yeah, I didn't think that would work. <laughs> I can't look at any of these rooms. Better not mess with that puppy. Oh, I'm sure I'll be using it eventually. Possibly in the climax. Now what's in here? Oh, that's a cool thing. Hey, come on over here. Hi, you're that Nancy person. How you doing? John Gray. He looks cool. I like him. It's a pleasure to meet you. I've seen your TV show. Then I don't have to explain what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. Right now I'm taking time-lapse electromagnetic readings and recording background noise. This was Camille's private car. If she had something to do with Lori's disappearance, analyzing these readings may give me a clue as to Lori's whereabouts. Do you really think that a moving train can be haunted? Sure. A train is basically nothing but a living space on wheels. And just like a house or a hotel, its walls can capture and hold energy, however infinitesimal, whatever its source. You see, what to most people are ghosts are actually temporary distortions in local electromagnetic fields caused by the presence of residual psychic energy generated by the person or persons who frequented that particular locale. And that's my working theory, at least. Oh, cool. So he has a pretty similar view to ghosts as I do. That's nice. That's very interesting. It's all very scientific. But the fact is, Lori's missing. And I, for one, am doing everything in my power to find her. The vibes I'm getting make me think she could be in serious trouble. Charlena Purcell thinks Lori is just playing some kind of joke on us. 
Charlena Purcell writes romance novels. End of comment. What do you think of Tino Balducci? I kind of feel sorry for the guy. After catching those bank robbers, he can't just be a good cop anymore. He's got to be a great cop. Tough to perform under that kind of pressure. Is Lori a friend of yours? First time I met her was when I boarded this train with all the rest of you. I knew her by reputation, of course, like everyone else who reads the tabloids. It doesn't appear that anyone aboard this train is her friend. Maybe she doesn't have any friends. Wouldn't be surprised. Maybe you can be too rich after all. I'll let you get back to work. Take care. Ooh, I think out of all the new characters, he's my favorite so far. Granted, I haven't really talked to Tony yet, but we'll see. Sup? I'll let you get back to work. Pleasure talking to you. He just seems like a fun guy to hang out. <clears throat> fun guy to hang out with. This looks like some sort of game. It's a little horse jockey thing. Hmm. Nothing happens. I'll bet I have to wind it up first. Shoot! Oops. Wipe out. Yay! What did I do? Wonder what's in here. I got a thing. Kempton races, cool. Thanks. We're gonna have to play music at some point, aren't we? The little book of samplers. Uh, I don't think I'm going to read all this out loud. Talk about needlepoint, embroidery. Well, I guess this is what the square and duck thing was talking about. So, nature and marital fidelity. Seven. Well, it's mine now. You left packing peanuts all over the floor. Sickly Sarah caught a germ so new, it made one of her pretty green eyes turn blue. Okay. Can I look at any of his other equipment? Oh, well, here's a piano. If we want to start playing Camp Town Races. If I had some music, I could play a tune. Oh, I don't remember the, uh, which keys are which. I'm not a musical person. I know we did something with a piano in Haunted Mansion, but that was a while ago now. Looks like some kind of sewing sampler. I wonder if there's a relationship between those symbols and those numbers. Oh, definitely. And now we got a doll called Awful Ursula. Why are there so many dolls with names here? At least I'm assuming that's a doll, not just a very angry child. It's locked. Of course it is. Looks like Camille was teaching herself how to play the piano. Thank you. Okay, C, D, E, F, G, and then A, B, C. Thomasina O'Neill. All right, well, let's try playing Camp Town Races, I guess. I don't know why, but it's here. Oh. Don't 
do that, please. Those microphones I set up over there are very sensitive. You just about took out my eardrums. Apologies. You can play that thing when I'm done. I'll let you know when that is, all right? Okay. Okay, we have to do that later then. I'm sorry. Teddy Eberhardt. Well, there's something to do with dolls here, definitely. Thank you for giving the doll we call Teddy Eberhardt a home. Krollmeister Doll Works. Alright, see you later. Wait, hold on, can I look at this? I wonder what's under here. And what the deal is with those weird looking bolts. Looks like I need a special tool. Probably. Hello? Nancy, hi, it's me. Hi, Bess. And me. Hey, George, what's up? What's up? You're the one who's on the train with a bunch of famous people. You tell us. This is torture, Nancy. I'm dying of curiosity here. Bess, just calm down. Oh, like you're not just as curious as I am. She's the one who insisted we call you Nancy, only because you're driving me crazy. I'm supposed to be helping her paint her room, but every other brush stroke, she's like, where do you think she is now? How do you think the Hardy Boys are doing? Why do you think she hasn't called? What do you think Laurie Gerard is wearing? Oh, George, that is so not true. I couldn't care less what Laurie Gerard is wearing. So come on, Nancy. You're on a train full of famous people bound for who knows where. So dish already, would ya? Bess, calm down. Look what you did. You got paint in my hair. I'm sorry. You know, actually, that looks kind of cool. Nice try, Bess. No, really! You're just saying that because you're afraid I'll bail and you'll wind up having to paint this dump all by yourself. George, I kid you not, you should seriously think about doing some major highlights in that color. What color is it? Adobe beige. Nice try, Bess. What's going on, Nan? Our hostess has disappeared. What do you mean, disappeared? I mean, the train went into a tunnel, everything went dark, and when the train came out of the tunnel, no lorry. She just disappeared. Publicity stunt. My thoughts exactly. Remember the time she was allegedly kidnapped from her Vegas hotel room? Yeah, the guy across the hall just happened to have a camera and got it all on tape. It made the evening news in practically every city in the country. And then there was her daring escape the next morning. Only it turns out she faked the whole thing. Of course, she claims her ex-boyfriend faked it to get back at her. She thought she was really being kidnapped. Like anybody believes that. Sounds to me like somebody has been spending a lot of time reading the tabloids. George has. Very funny. So what else is going on? Before she disappeared, Lori told us that the purpose of this train trip is to find out what happened to Jake Hurley, the train's original owner. Was he murdered or something? No one knows. He was married to a woman named Camille, but she died. And he eventually vanished while mining for gold. His train was found abandoned in Blue Moon Canyon, Nevada, with no one on board but his dead engineer. Whoa, spooky. Have any theories? Not yet, but the train is also rumored to be haunted by his dead wife. Hmm. So first Hurley's wife dies, then Hurley vanishes, then the engineer dies, then Lori vanishes. A pattern, maybe? <laughs> Bess, do us all a favor and leave the detective work to Nancy, okay? Has either of you been to Copper Gorge, Colorado? Never heard of the place. Why? Well, that's where the train I'm on is headed. Apparently, Jake Hurley buried his wife Camille there after she died on the train. She died on the train? Ew, creepy. John Gray has set up a bunch of equipment in Camille's train car in hopes of documenting distortions in the electromagnetic field caused by her residual energy. Say what? He's looking for Camille's ghost. Don't you ever watch him on TV? Just because I watch him doesn't mean I understand him. Catch you later. We'll be right here. Yeah, washing the paint out of our hair. All right, let's continue down the train. See what see if we can find other people to talk to. It's a nice couch. Hey, Nancy, right? That's right, Nancy Drew. Amateur detective, huh? Never thought about becoming a real detective? You know, like me? Well, I don't know. Do you like what you do? I love it. You, uh, heard about those bank robberies I solved, right? Tell me about them. Baffling case. Two-man team at 17 banks in three states in five days. FBI had no idea who the perps were. But after forcing their vehicle to a stop, confronting them, despite the fact that they were armed and giving chase, I single-handedly made the collar. Oh, 
These options. Nancy, you are savage today. I heard they stopped because you accidentally rear-ended them. You heard wrong. You see, Nancy, when somebody does something really remarkable in this country, the first thing everybody else does is try to tear them down. Reporters, late-night comedians, even some of my fellow officers. All have been spreading vicious lies about me. Why? Because they've never done anything remarkable in their sorry little lives, and they're jealous. Anyway, you should look around in here. Lots of interesting stuff. This was Jake's private car, you know. Hmm, he sounds a little bitter about things. I understand that you found something on the floor in the dining car. Yeah, at uh, first I thought it was an old coin, but it uh, turned out to be some kind of slug. You mean like an animal slug or like an ammo slug? Where do you think it came from? Probably been lying there for a hundred years. May have served a purpose back then, but now, worthless. Okay, I'll assume that means it was an ammo slug and not a living slug then. May I see it? Sure. In fact, here, keep it. Wear it around your neck or something. That way, when people ask you where you got it, you can tell them Tino Balducci gave it to you. THE Tino Balducci. This is not a definition of slug that I was familiar with. Apparently it's another word for an, an old coin. Oh, thank you. What else can I do for you? So, what do you think happened to Lori? Well, she could have been kidnapped, she could have been tossed off the train, she could be hiding from us. But I obviously won't know which until I've gathered all the facts. So, you're gathering facts? Of course. It may not look it because that's my style. I'm a low-key kind of guy. But hey, don't worry. I'll know the facts when I know the facts. The truth can't be rushed, you know. That's true. Have you had a chance to talk to Charlena Purcell? Now, why would I want to do a thing like that? You don't like her? I can't stand those sappy books she writes. And seeing as I said as much during an interview on national TV once, it's a pretty safe bet she doesn't like me. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of romance books either, but I'm not gonna bash the genre. Have you talked to John Gray? <laughs> the ghost guy? Total quack. Only reason I'd talk to him would be to arrest him for fraud. It's been great talking to you. Anything for a fellow detective. Okay, so Tony just doesn't like other people. <laughs> I like his statue right here, though. Okay, what have you got here? Periodic table, my best friend. Oh yeah. Anytime this shows up in a game, I get excited. These elements down here, the U ones, they're very funny to me. Camille with Hagar Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard? More dolls. Camille with Hager Anderson and Chantilly Hildegard. She liked dolls, apparently. I'm definitely picking up on that. Gemstones, and how do I identify them? Well, I, I watched Steven Universe, so... I'm... Maybe it was Olivine, then. Not Peridot. It wasn't emerald, it wasn't that deep green. Or maybe it was peridot. Oh, it's a form of olivine. I didn't know that. Cool. Looks like an old-fashioned cigar box. Wonder why it's locked. And what does AG mean? AG is silver, right? Yeah. Oh, does, it, does it say the uh, chemical elements of each gemstone?
No, not really. I was looking to see if any of these had traces of silver in them. Well, they are kind of talking about... elements a little bit. But I didn't see any silver. So I don't think I can do anything with that just yet. J.H. For Jake Hurley, obviously. Must be Jake's insignia. Cool. We aren't gonna look at this? Leaping lizards? Okay. I'm guessing I don't want any of these to be disconnected. They're all done. Yay. I don't know what that did, but I did it. Another gemstone. So gemstones and dolls. Oh, I saw a paper down there. Hold on. Eliza Sandberger. Received of J. Carly for the price of $3.73. One Krollmeister doll with decorative red ribbon on the 16th day of June, 1880. I hope I don't have to remember all these doll names. An old scale. Strange. It seems to be built into the wall. Those symbols look like the ones I saw in that sampler. Oh, slugs are like weights then. Okay. Yeah, and we saw the numbers associated with these, so I'm gonna that's part of that puzzle. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to know all these. <laughs> it's locked. Well, I'm just looking around exploring the place right now. I'm not really trying to solve anything just yet. Okay, now that I've talked to everyone, do you have anything else to say? Stop. I won't keep you any longer. Pleasure talking to you. I think I'll just make my way back to the front of the train and talk to all of our lovely friends. Or I guess the back of the train, really? Which way are we going? I'm not sure. The other end of the train. More questions? The others on the train, John Gray and that police detective, do you know them very well? I don't know them at all. Needless to say, I don't watch television, so I've never even seen Mr. Gray before. Although I do know that his profession, if you can call it that, is rife with crackpots. As for Mr. Balducci, from what I've read, his success in solving those robberies was less a matter of talent and more a matter of being in the right place at precisely the right time. In other words, you don't think he deserves all the attention he's getting? No. You and those two Boy Scouts you're with would make better detectives. Is that all, dear? Well, I'll let you go. All right, then. I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, one sec, I have to check something. Well, I'm actually gonna have to stop right here. This one's a lot of fun so far. I like the setting, I like the characters so far. I'm excited to see where this goes. So, thanks for watching, hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!